This PowerPoint presentation is aimed at introducing you to and helping you answer nine mark questions. For today's question, you can see it's here on the front of the PowerPoint. For a name city and a HIC, to what extent do the opportunities outweigh the challenges? Below that, I put something which I think is quite useful in terms of just analysing questions when you first see them. So we've got bug, B-U-G. B is for bracket, the command words, U, underline key terms, and G, just glance back to the question when you're writing it. I think sometimes that we plan a question out and then start writing it out and don't look back at the question, and sometimes that causes us to go off tact a little bit. So whenever you're starting a new paragraph, just look back at that question and really think about, am I answering it? Is what I'm writing answering that particular question? So let's start off by looking at the command words. So in this question, for a name city in a HIC, to what extent do the opportunities outweigh the challenges? So here we've identified the command words, or sometimes we call it the prompt word, as to what extent. Now this is instructing us how to answer the question. There are lots of other command words we used. I've listed some here. So analyze, calculate, justify. And if you wanted to, you can go and find a list of all the command words that are used in the Geography AQA exams, and that's the link below. And it tells you all of them, they list them, and they explain what each of them will mean. So from the AQA Geography website, to what extent is looking at judging the importance or success of a strategy, a scheme, or a project. For this question, really we're going to be saying one of the following statements. So we think that Sheffield has more opportunities than challenges. Two, we think that Sheffield has more challenges than opportunities. Or three, we think that Sheffield has a balance of opportunities and challenges. It's really important that in your introduction you state which of those statements you agree with. So it's really important that you say to what extent you think either Sheffield has lots of opportunities and those opportunities are greater than the number of challenges or you think one of the other two statements. Now for the key terms here, I've underlined quite a few. So I've underlined named city, I've underlined HIC, opportunities, outweigh, and challenges. It's really important we understand as much as we can about the question and what it's asking us to write about and that's going to make us have a really focused answer. So let's have a look at what some of these are. So to begin with named city. So you're going to need to name a specific city in your answer. HIC, that city will need to come from a high income country. Opportunities, I've just said here that they're the positive things that living in a city can bring to either an individual or maybe the wider community. Challenges are the opposite, so they're maybe the negative things or any problems that we might find about living in a city. And this term outweigh is really thinking about, well, which one is greater than the other. The bottom right hand side here I've just put in a little grey box the case studies for urban issues and challenges. It's really important that you know what case studies relate to which exam paper and each section of the exams you're doing. I would almost make, write them and put them on my wall so I had them around me for each of the different topic areas. So when you come to these questions you know what it's asking for. This one is asking for a name, city and a HIC. Well, the only cities we've looked at so far in urban issues and challenges is Rio de Janeiro and Sheffield. Rio is arguably a LIC or possibly a newly emerging economy, whereas Sheffield is a HIC. So for this question, I know by looking at my case studies which city I am going to be talking about. Now for nine mark questions, there are um, rules about the types of things that we need to include and one of the key rules is that you're going to need to include an introduction and a conclusion. Your introduction should be really short and snappy. 
you need to name the city that you're going to be looking at and you need to say to what extent you think the opportunities either do or do not outweigh the challenges. This example below is a really simple way of conducting an introduction. Sheffield is a city in the north of England. I believe that the opportunities significantly outweigh the challenges. I put that word significantly in red because I just wanted to draw attention to it. This is where I'm saying to what extent I believe the opportunities outweigh the challenges. I'm not saying I just think they do outweigh the challenges. I'm saying that I think they significantly outweigh the challenges. So by living in Sheffield, I really believe that it's going to provide someone with more opportunities than it would do the problems that living in the city. You might think the opposite. I've only put this in as an example. There's no right or wrong way of answering the question as long as you support your statement in the paragraphs that you go on to write. At this point, I'm going to get you all to think about um, the different opportunities and challenges that Sheffield um, provides to people. So I would even pause this presentation in a moment and you could even complete it as two separate spider diagrams where you just look back through your notes and you're highlighting any of the key opportunities, so any positive things that you can find about living in Sheffield and any challenges that you might find about living in the city. And within those, you might want to jot down any examples um, or any numbers or statistics that might be able to help you as well. So I would take maybe 10 or 15 minutes just to spend a little bit of time doing that now. When we come on to the main body of your work, you need to be writing two or three short paragraphs which are looking at supporting your opening statement. Now you should all be familiar with the structure that we use, which is P-E-E-G. Now it starts off with a point, so making sure that you're making a clear statement. And then these two, you can, I always think that you can interchange them slightly. So when it comes to explain or expand and evidence, I think it's you can do it either way around, whichever way suits you. But you do need to make sure you are including evidence if possible and explaining and really expanding upon your point. The G for geography is trying to link the point that you're making to the bigger, wider picture of geography. Now we developed this system by the PEEG by looking at the examiner's report. And what we found was our students who are reaching the very top marks were students who were linking it back to wider pictures. So if you're talking about pollution in Sheffield and problems with congestion and car use, the G for geography will be linking that to the wider picture of global warming and climate change. So it's just showing that you can you can envision you can really see um, the wider picture of the geography that you're studying is not only related to Sheffield as a city, but it's also related to the wider world that we live in. Now with the PEEG, it's an aspirational paragraph. We know that in an exam, when you're under pressure, you're not always going to be able to um, include all of these points. But we feel if we can aim for this, aim to use this structure, one, we can create really good answers which we can use to revise from, and two, if we get anywhere close to these answers in the exam, we think that they are going to be, you know, really allowing you to access the higher marks. Now I'm not going to go through this, but it might be good for you to have a look at this. This is an example that Miss Glue put, and it's actually on the sheets that we use in school of how to write a nine mark question. You might just want to have a look at this paragraph. It outlines a challenge, um, which is looking at pollution within the city. And you can just have a read through it and think about how she structured her answer and use the PEEG structure. In your answer, it's going to be really important to give both sides of the argument. So if you're arguing that the challenges are greater than the opportunities, you might write two paragraphs talking about what the challenges are, and then a paragraph, and this could be a shorter paragraph, recognising the fact that you do see there are opportunities. So it is important that your answer has some balance to it. Finally, you'll need to include a conclusion. And your conclusion should be very simple and straightforward, short and snappy, saying um, to what extent you think the opportunities either do outweigh or do not outweigh the challenges, or it might be the case that you think there is a balance. 
Here on the right hand side you've got something called the extent o meter and these are just some words that you can use to talk about um, whether or not you agree with the statement and so they might be quite useful to be able to include in your conclusion. It shouldn't be longer than one or two sentences and if you can you should try and link it back to the question and summarise your answer. So hopefully this will help you in terms of um, having a go at doing a nine mark question. This can be applied to uh, any nine mark question that you have in the exam to try and use this structure. Obviously every question is different but hopefully this will go some way to helping you structure your answers in a way that allow you to reach the top mark boundaries.